y'all it's raining outside and it's about to snow it's like 30 something degrees outside but we about to get this video done so i can go because i'm not getting trapped in this snow i barely had tread on my tires <laughs> but y'all welcome back to another video i wanted to um do this video on dental materials and dental radiology um someone did request it so shout out to you for requesting this video and thank you so much for subscribing liking and commenting i appreciate you guys so much uh, let's get into it. Um, the first thing, I think the first class I had was um, radiology. So these are the two books that I did use, um, dental radiology. This is the main book we study out of. Um, our courses was dental radiology one and two. So it was two six week courses on dental radiology. The first one of course was an introduction. Um, I was always told the intros um, is gonna be hardest. And of course the second round is just easy. It's kind of like going back over what you already learned and applying it. So you'll actually have patients that'll come in with well, one patient that'll come in and you will do a full FMX on the patient. So starting off, dental radiology is is basically doing x-rays you know x-rays is um radiation so it's all about being safe first and then making sure you get the best type of image possible because radiology you need this to, in order to see what you can't see on the outside so you might have a patient that comes in their tooth is aching you don't see anything wrong on the surface but with the x-ray you can see if they have a ab fracture or a, not an ab fracture, but an abscess that's on the um, the root. So you wanna make sure you get the best shot possible. So, dental radiology, just the full, um, y'all might have a different version than me. This was last year, so I'm pretty sure y'all will have a updated version um, soon. So like the first part of this book is like radiation history. Um, just talks about who came up with radiation. Um, before you can get to radiology, you already have your physics and your chemistry out the way. But this kind of goes back over what you already learned. It talks about the matter, the electronics, the um, electrons that's um, coming through because radiology is based off of electrons that's bouncing off and it'll give you an image. Um, if the electron cannot bounce through it, that means it's going to be radiopaque. If it does bounce through, it will be radiolucent. So that's really the basis of radiology, honestly. Um, I, I'm i not gonna say it was easy. I just enjoy science. So it was more interesting for me to learn it. If it's not as interesting, you're probably not gonna be as um, excited to learn it. Um, I enjoyed this type of stuff. Like it talks about the electron shells, like it, chemistry really does help you understand what's going on in radiology. So when you take chemistry, make sure you really pay attention to electromagnetivity. Um, that's really important as well when it comes to chemistry. Um, it talks about people who can be exposed, who can be exposed, especially like pregnant women, people who are already going through chemo and chemo radi and, um, radiation. Um, it talks about radiation basics. Gosh, this is bringing back so many memories. I'm not sure how much of this is going to be on board, so I don't want I don't want to lie to you guys. But a lot of it is really just based on safety, patient exposure, exposure, the race, the um, patient exposure, and the dosage they can have. Like you wouldn't want to keep exposing your patient every six months you want to do it at least once a year that way that their um exposure is not above the um the limit now also talks about radiation protection the lead lead is a big thing because when you put the lead apron on lead absorbs electrons that's coming through the radiation so anything that's covered will pretty much be safe that's why we put on our thyroid collar when we're also doing um, x-rays because we don't want to make sure that we don't give any exposure to the thyroid. We don't want to have anyone have um, thyroid issues at the end. So that's also important. So that's what this is mainly about. It talks about your films. You got your traditional film. You got your sensors. I love sensors. Sensors will change your life. You will see once you go from traditional doing all the uh, FMX to going through a sensor where it mounts everything for you and it um, flips everything and it just has everything in order as you go along, you will fall in love. I'm telling you this now, it's amazing. 
So yeah, it talks about that. It talks about what would happen when you're using x-ray film. Say for instance, you um, accidentally touched the film. You can have um, images of your fingerprint on there. You can have fingerprints. You can have images of your fingernails. You can have images of like, when you take the imp when you take the film out of the package too fast, you can have like electric uh, electricity showing on there because it, you moved it too fast. So it's a lot of different things that goes into radiology that a lot of people don't think about. Um, and also one of the biggest things you could possibly think about when it comes to radiology is images. What are you going to see when you see that? You have to learn the different anatomic regions, the what's the norm when it comes to the human mouth? Because if you see something and you're not sure what it is, then you're lost. You're not gonna know what's going on. So to know the norm, then you'll know what's abnormal when it comes to that. Um, you can see different types of calculus. You can see crowns, you can see composites, amalgam. Composite and amalgam is different because amalgam is more radiopaque, meaning it's more white than composite. So you can be able to see that when you're looking at a radiology or um, image like that. You can see, of course, different um, orthodontic appliances if they do have those. You can see the um, canals, the foramens. You can see so many different things when it comes to that. It's just really amazing. And you will actually begin to love and just pick out, like, oh, I see this, oh, I see um, the zygomatic arch, I see this. Like, it's just so cool to see in the, the mouth because it's not something you can see on the, on the human eye. So you have to use stuff like that in order to give your patient the best type of um, appointment possible. So you also have your panoramic um, machine. We have a brand new one. We had just got um, over the um, you know the pandemic. So um, I love using the panoramic um, machine. You can also do bite wings. We just found that out recently. You can do bite wings on there. Um, so in radiology one and two, you should be able to be taught on the panel machine because they all consist of radiology as well. So that's really important. Um, we did use the super, super old traditional film, like the one where you're using silver um, slides and you have to put it in the machine and let the machine do its thing. You have to like reach in there and find it and then grab it and then to expose the, um, the uh, slides so you don't um, throw it away and contaminate the water. Like we used old, old stuff. That was one time, thank God, I'm not, I didn't enjoy that. Um, yeah, that was not fun. Also, you gotta learn about your, ooh, Lord, your impulses, your KA, your C, up and down, contrast, all of that's important. Um, usually the time we're in now, the machines that you should have in your office, if they're up to date, should be able to adjust everything but if you have to go to traditional, I believe you do still have to learn how to do this, but the, your normal, your um, modern machine should be able to do this, no problem. As long as you hit the right thing, like if you wanna do a bite wing, maxillary, mandibular, if you wanna do bite wing, it should be able to um, adjust the power for you. That way you really don't have to worry about, am I adding too much, um, too much, not like exposing the person too much. The biggest takeaway I learned from radiology, at the end of the day, once you pass radiology, the biggest thing that the dentist wants to see is that can they see everything? Um, say for instance, you are told to take a FMX. So FMX consists of um, two molar shots. Let's see, two molar shots. It's a molar shot, pre-molar shot. Uh, lateral, lateral, central. So that's on all the sides of the maxillary. Molar shot, premolar, lateral, central, lateral, premolar shot, and then molar shot. And then bite wings, molar, molar, molar. I say molar, molar, but you're trying to get the um, premolar as well. So premolar shot as well. So you all total, you should have 18. I might, I might have done it wrong because I'm not in clinic mind right now but you should have 18 um, shots for your FMX. Now say for instance, your doctor wants to see if your um, patient has an abscess over here. Say you didn't get, say for instance, your doctor wants to see um, the crown better in the back of the um, tube. So say for instance, the crown is on the second molar. If you don't get that shot on the molar shot of the FMX, 
you can see if you can get it on the bite wing. Bite wings do help a lot because bite wings help you see in approximate those inner dental spaces. You want to be able to see if, say, for instance, that crown has some overhang, and the overhang might produce um, calculus uh, deposits. So that's one way to get it. You might not get it on one shot, but you might get it on the other shot. As long as you can see something somewhere, the dentist will be happy. Now, some dentists are different. Some are like, well, why didn't you get it on this one? You should have had it on the first one. Well, sir, some people's mouths are different and the dentist should know that, y'all. So don't let the dentist beat you up over you not getting the perfect shot. Everybody's mouth is different. People have macroglossia. Some people have small mouths and it's hard to put the uh, size two film in an adult mouth. You might have to change it out, but you're not thinking about that. You're thinking about your time. You're thinking about the patient's time. You're not worried about that. So at the end of the day, as long as you can diagnose, as long as the dentist can diagnose with that radiograph, you should be fine. Um, let's see, dental images, of course, you, in radiology, you do have to determine, decipher what you're looking at, especially when we're in clinic and we don't have a patient we have to sit down and um, do a radiograph fatigue. What can we see in this image? What can we not see in this image? And we are greater on that. So learn your anatomy. Learn it now. Don't wait, because you're going to be like me and struggle. Patient relations, and of course, lead aprons. That's always important. Never, never, never. Do not turn that machine on until you put that lead apron on. That would just help keep you um, conscious of what you're doing do not do that because guys if you expose your patient without having a lead able on you can have serious consequences not just from the patient but from your school because you are harming the patient do no harm is part of the um the care factor when it comes to dental hygiene and let's see legal issues i just went over that and you can get serious trouble if you keep exposing these people and you're not supposed to do that so yeah, this show is just a full mouth series right here. Um, also a pano. Panos are fun, y'all. You just have to remember, I always mess up with panos because it's like you're rushing, you're just trying to make sure you get everything right. Um, but it's, it's super quick once you get everything perfect. You always have to make sure their feet, their, uh, of course, their lead apron is on. The biggest part is on the back because it's going around. You're gonna be exposing the back more than anything. So make sure you always have the biggest part of the lead apron, kind of like this, on the back. So make sure the lead apron is on, make sure you clean the panel machine. They'll step up to the uh, um, panel, you wanna adjust the height, make sure that the um, plastic barrier is on where they're biting at, make sure it's all sanitized. They'll grab the handles, two hands of course. They'll step up, make sure they're leaning. They're leaning a little bit more forward and the head is slightly down. And you want to make sure they're biting on the notch. Put their front teeth, eight and nine, inside the notch. They're biting down. Their chin is on the little um, blue thing. Mine is blue. Chin down, uh, teeth in the notch. And then you want to make sure their tongue is to the roof of their mouth. They can close their mouth. I prefer them to um, smile. I believe they close it. Correct me if I'm wrong. They close their mouth and then they'll adjust. They'll put the head thing on. You want to adjust their... The laser, there's a laser that goes this way and this way. So I'm gonna make sure the laser is, I believe, on the lateral side of the um, the uh, incisors on both sides. And then this part is like level to their nose. And then it'll go around, it'll just, you stand six feet, it takes like less than 10 seconds for the whole um, radiograph to go around. I mean, panel machine to go around. So. That's what consists of that. But it's really easy, y'all. Radiology is just a lot of stuff. But once you get it, you get it. Like, you don't really forget it because it's like something you're gonna do all the time. Everyone's gonna need a radiograph eventually. So yeah, that's that. Um, um, paralleling technique, that's what we'll talk about in there. Um, panoramic, just went over that. Y'all will learn all of this. I'm not here to teach you this. I'm just kind of here to give you a few things that what you'll be um, looking forward to. So I'm not, I'm not teaching this. This is beyond my pay grade. I'm not even getting paid. Um, extra oral imaging, uh, patients with special needs. We didn't really go over stuff like that. Not too much. Um, just because like you have help in the clinic. Most people that have special needs, you're either in a wheelchair, um, you won't be able to like reach the panel machine good enough. Like you always have different adjustments. You have um, ways to combat that in the office. 
so yeah just talk about digital imaging we don't have a three-dimensional uh image thing so we don't even go over that um of course the anatomy I'm telling you guys learn your anatomy now before it's too late you got your different foramens, your general tubercle, your um, nutrient canals that's right in front of your incisors. Y'all, this is, I enjoy learning this. Um, mandibular canal, your mandibular canal runs right here. So it's a lot of different anatomic um, structures that you need to know before you get in there. Of course, that's going to be your prereq, so you're not going to really have to worry about that unless you forget. So it's okay to forget. Just make sure you relearn it so you'll know. So yeah, that's radiology. Front and back, and there's also this. I don't know. Oh, this is just to help you guys study. <laughs> I didn't use it for real. But um, this is just to help you guys study at the end if you need extra help. And next, dental materials. I enjoy dental materials. It's um, it's really when you're working with composite amalgam. It has a little bit to do with oil surgery. Um, like when you're doing a root canal. Um, um, let's see, you're doing sealant. Sealant is the biggest thing for a dental hygienist just because we can do sealants, it's not um, invasive. So all you're doing is putting like an acid etch on the tube, you're rinsing it, you're isolating, you're drying it, you're putting your um, your sealant on, you let that sit, you're using the light to cure it, shaking it, all that good stuff. That's not the exact order, but that's the majority of what you're doing with sealants. So and that's really majority of what you're doing in here, unless you have the doctor come in and you're helping them. So, more about this so we talked about the different subjects the main subjects in here that we talked about were let's see so like oral environment and patient considerations so we talked a lot about socioeconomic levels because when you have someone that comes into the clinic and they can't afford a composite it's like, okay, you can record a composite, but you, we do have this option, it's called amalgam. Most people don't want amalgam because it is not um, uh, uh, aesthetically pleasing to the eye. So if you do get amalgam, most people only get it on their molars because you're not gonna see your molars when you smile. So that's the majority of the time. But if someone has to get a, a silver crown put on, they're, you know, that's for people who normally are in a, so, a lower so, socioeconomic status. So for crowns, um, most people want uh, composites. Composites are more pleasing. They can match your teeth. They're, um, they're more expensive, but it's, it's almost for the better because you won't have to worry about seeing that, seeing that amalgam in the um, front. It talks about the moisture and acidic levels, temperature, retention, micro leakage when you do put these um, extra devices in the mouth to protect the teeth. It talks about all of that because certain things like moisture can affect how well your crowns do, how well your uh, composites do. That does have a big factor on it because if it cannot adhere to the tooth, then it could possibly fall, fall out and that will be more money that you have to spend. So we talked about a lot of stuff like that. It was very interesting. Um, let's see. Talked about the different bio aerosols. Um, basically, um, keeping your workplace safe when you are doing these different types of procedures. Sometimes you do have to. Um, the dentist has to use like a bird to kind of get um, some of the tooth out the way, so he can apply certain materials to the teeth. And those birds can create aerosols. The aerosols can have different bacteria and germs in it. We just want to make sure that everyone's wearing a PPE. We have high volume suction on, so we are not getting um, infected. We're not infecting other people. Um, we also talked about um, mercury. We don't use mercury as much anymore. It's kind of like a dying thing, but for those who do still use it, um, just we talked about just how to dispose of it for one, disposing of it properly so people don't get poisoned because mercury poison is a thing. Like people still can get poisoned by it. A lot of people aren't um, aware of the the, um, the um, precautions to it. If you don't vacuum up mercury, if you spill it, you have to have certain um, materials to use to dispose of the mercury properly. 
talked about teeth whitening. We already have done teeth whitening. I have a video, I believe, on that. So go look at, look at that. Um, I haven't posted. And I'll try and put it at the end for you guys to go back and watch. I do have dental material videos out there. So you guys can see that if you want to. I um, talked about composites, glass ionomers. Oh gosh, the biggest thing is fluoride. Fluoride, of course, for who don't know, is not harmful. It's only harmful when you take excess of it. And anything, if you take more from what you're supposed to, it's harmful. So keep that in mind when you hear people talk about fluoride. Fluoride is in strawberries, it's in fruit, it's in your water, it's in the air. Like fluoride is a lot of places that a lot of people don't know. It's, it's very common, y'all. So please don't feel like, you know, it's a harmful thing. Anything can be harmful. So we talked about that fluoride is something that helps remineralize the tooth enamel so when you have that bacteria that comes in creates acid from those sugary sweets and stuff that you guys eat it can create a hole in your tooth and holes in your teeth can start to create cavities so once you get that cavity in say it's on the first level if you already apply fluoride you can prevent that cavity from further getting um deeper into the towards, towards the root so you don't have to get a root canal so once you apply that fluoride, it can remineralize it. So that's why a lot of times we apply fluoride for one prevention and for two to kind of create that um, that next extra crystal enamel layer, so that hopefully that that extra layer of hydroxyapatite, um, so you don't lose any more tooth. I'm talk about a preventive and desensitizing material, which is fluoride. Fluoride prevents. Fluoride also blocks those two wheels in your teeth, so that you don't have that. Um, high um, high to low concentration shifting when you always eat hot and cold foods that's what happens in your tooth and you guys will learn more about that it's very interesting I love learning about that that was really fun um, dental ceramics he talked about the basic um, ceramics non-glass basic ceramics CAD and CAM restorations we don't have a CAD CAM machine that's very expensive I think they said it costs like a hundred grand we ain't got 100 grand. I did not get 100 grand from me. I already got my money, so I don't know where they're gonna get it from. But the CAD CAM machine is really cool. Y'all learn more about that. It's just a machine that can make basically a 3D um, rendering of your tooth. So for people who have the tooth pool, they can get another tooth that's basically the same um, size, shape, color, all of that good stuff. Um, dental amalgam talked about that. You learn plenty of, about dental amalgam. You learn plenty about the metal and alloys that's in the tooth. Dental implants, um, you know, of course, you got your your different fixtures, bone grafting, sutures. We didn't go into too much detail. We just kind of talked about it because that's more for people who specialize in like dental um, surgery. Um, let's see, impressions, waxes, polymers. A lot of this had to do with dentistry. And when I say dentistry, like orthodontics. A lot of this does have to do with orthodontics and learning how to manipulate different metals in there. Um, so yeah, I love dental materials. I can't remember if it was a six week course. I'm gonna say it was 12. I don't think it was a six week course, but I enjoyed it. It's nothing too crazy. Um, a lot of it had to do with labs. So we did go to the lab a lot. Um, we learned about how to make whitening trays, how to apply, how to put the, um, facet in there don't use facet when you first learn how to do um whitening trays use the slowest set possible use cold water the warmer the water the faster your stuff is going to set your stone is going to set and you're not going to have fun trying to manipulate i'm not stone you're not going to have fun trying to manipulate that stuff in the mouth so make sure you use cold water make sure you measure everything correctly it's all on the um the um the bag so you should be able to use that appropriately don't <laughs> and be careful when you have someone that's a gagger because i had somebody you know who you are uh, hit me because i went too far back and she was a gagger so just be sure be mindful don't say are you a gagger and then stick in your mouth because they're already gonna think about it just make sure you're aware of what's going on and always start with the man the mandible first they're not gonna gag on the mandible. They're gonna gag on the maxillary. So as long as you got the mandible, you don't have to worry about going from the maxillary to the mandible because they're gonna, always gonna be thinking they're gonna throw up. So mandible first, then maxillary. That's the key to whitening trays. So yeah, overall, 
those are the two classes I took. I hope that helped a little bit. I was just trying to go over what to expect, um, the subjects and the topics that we went over. Like I said, I'm not a teacher by any means, um, and I'm I'm not even clean it mentally to be able to teach you guys certain things. So, but I hope that helps you guys out a lot. And yeah, let me know what else you want to learn about and what else you can look forward to in your classes. I'll be glad to help you guys. Thank you for watching and thank you for liking, subscribing, commenting. I appreciate you guys so much. So hit me up, let me know what you want to see and I'll see you guys next time.